pigeon live with Andy Bumatai. Ivala our planet, that's no lie. That's what the Hammer Jang Gang like for see. When we tune in, we get that guarantee. Daily pigeon live with Andy Bumatai. Turn on the camera and let him fly. He just give him no more plan. Like we always say, if can, can. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as we spread aloha far and wide. Ooh, Emma Jane Gang and the Daily Pigeon Live. How's your gangy? And welcome to the Daily Pigeon Live. My name is Andy Bumatai, and I will be your JPO. Chat monitor, bus driver, hall monitor, whatever you like call me, because believe me, I've been called worse. <laughs> so you know what? Thanks, Seth, for joining us here. And if you are joining us for the first time, I always start the show with one small, kind speech. And that is that in this chat show, we practice aloha. We concentrate on what brings us together, what we have in common, and not what separates us. Okay? So if you're looking for a chat show that, you know, where you can type in all caps and get in flame wars with people... This is not the place. Here we practice aloha, we show respect for each other, and yes, we are all different with political views and any kind of views, all different. But guess what? We check what separates us at the door when we take off our shoes. And here we do our best to practice aloha and just have a small kind of space where we can get away from <clears throat> you know what. Okay, and we always like to start the show by saying, uh, how's it to everybody? Let's start with Marilyn. How's it, Marilyn? Hey, Brian, how are you? And there's Karen, Wild Willie. Hey, Brendan, what's up, my brother? And there's uh, Karen again. Ooh, you get the double aloha. How's that? How's it, Robert? And Susan R. And Curtis. How are you, Curtis? Now, we are simulcasting on YouTube, okay? and on Facebook. So when you see this, the Facebook symbol on the bottom there, I mean, excuse me, uh, YouTube, that's YouTube. And here, look, check it out. Johnny Costa uh, is from Facebook, right? And he, so is Jennifer. How's it, Jennifer? Kindness is the noka oi. Oh, that's it. Thanks, uh, for supporting. And we are the Hamajang Gang, like I mentioned. And for those of you new to Hawaiian Pidgin English, Hamajang means all mix up. If you took the sock drawer and just threw it on the floor, mix them all up, as Hamajang. Because we're all different, right? But we all the same at the same time. That's right. How's it, Freddy? Oh, never click on eyes, you good. That's right. And you know what, gang? Also, um, let me play some music in the back here, small kind. Yeah, we'll pretend we're in an elevator. <sighs> there are no fast elevators. You know, that's a law of nature right there. Hey, James Ian Emerson, how are you? Hey, Tegan, aloha, gangi, and uncle. Is that Tory Richards? Yes, this is a Tory Richards shirt um, acquired at Savers at a very reduced price. <laughs> ah, man, I, Garen Ball Barons one day, <laughs> Savers going to call me up. Hey, uh, <clears throat> Interesting sponsorship. Hey, how's it, Miles? How are you? Great interview last night. Oh, mahalo, Miles. Uh, today, oh, how come the click is not working? Come on, click. You got to wake up. The show has started. Yes, uh, today we have Loretta Ablesayer, uh, a very good friend of mine, and uh, Radford grad who went on to perform at the Lincoln Center on Broadway in New York. Uh, in a show you may have heard of, South Pacific. Yeah, so we're going to talk to her small kind uh, just a little bit before four, maybe. How's it, Debbie? How are you? All the way from Maui. And there's Ku'u Aloha, my avatar crush. How are you? Huh? Oh, my goodness. Hey, and there's Charles K with the K. If you see people just typing the K, what that is, we call it the wellness check. If you're lurking or you, you don't like, you know, mess with a small keyboard, 
just give us one K. That's right. So we know you okay. Catch. And if you're having one really good day, no shame. Capitalize them so we know. Huh? Hey, how's it, Scott? Coming in from the Facebook side. Good evening, Andy. Aloha. Who from the big sky country of Montana? Hope you're having a great day. Yes, I am. And it just improved because I can see all the Hammer Jang gang saying hello to each other. Hey, how's it, Michi? Uh, Michi Moto, sorry, <clears throat> smoking gala galas. Oh, hello, Gengi, and the other side. I'm on Facebook today. Oh, good, representing both sides. Sometimes she's, you know, YouTube, sometimes Facebook. Hey, variety is the spice of life. Aloha, Andy and Gengi. Happy Monday. How are you? Danny. Danny is the moderator of our Facebook group, Daily Pigeon Live. Um, you can check it out over there if you're on the Facebook side. Hey, aloha, Facebook Gengi from Maryland. Yeah, how's it? Oh, Tina Rose, Gager. Aloha no kako. Right there, saying how's it to everybody. Okay, now I got to keep up because, you know, Every day, this chat move more like a swift. So there we go. E, how's it, Brian? I appreciate it. And, you know, <clears throat> I got to get my magnifying glass and read your avatar one of these days because, you know, I'm wondering. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Hi, Andy. How are you doing during this lockdown? Well, it's nice when you have a broadcast station in your bedroom so you can talk to the Hammer Jang gang. So I am doing just fine. Madori, the happy dog. How's it, Madori? Aloha, Andy and Gangi. Blessed to be here. Awesome to see you. Uh, let me know about the music, uh, <clears throat> happy dog, okay? We, we always use Madori because she gets super ears. I know. We, sh we started out calling her dog ear, and then she became dog ear and I, and then she became happy dog. You have to have been here to appreciate that. So there we go. Okay, again, I'll be racing, trying to get to the bottom. Hey, Kalamai, if I uh, miss your chat, but oh, kind of hard, you know, keep up. I know you guys can see them whipping by, and I'm trying to talk, and and click on eyes and read them. Ooh, Hamma Jang from New Mexico. I like New Mexico. I was there last year, rode my bike, beautiful. How's it, Andy? Sending much aloha. DJ Rafi Ocean in Al Alameda, California. The Island City. Ooh, Rafi, thanks for dropping in. Okay, let's see. Hey, aloha from Kona. There we go. Hey, I went, I went to that place, Karen. And, oh, sorry, private conversation. Avert your eyes. Avert your eyes. Mahalo, Thomas Jones, for giving us the K. Nice to see you are okay. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Hey, I'm going to be lurking. I'm going to uh, finish bagging the salmon. Well, you know, if you had to pick a priority, bagging the salmon. <laughs> What's better than that, huh? Mm. Okay, again, sorry if I, if I miss any of your, of your chats, but I got to catch the bottom of that bug. I just run away. Hey, hello, Andy and gang. Just got back from 13,800 feet. Oh, my goodness. I hope they went wash them feet because, you know, it can be overwhelming, huh? Come on, man. No, come on, man. I did a holo holo today, and he went uh, to the top of the mountain. He talked to me about it before he left. So we'll have that footage, hopefully, for tomorrow. We'll see. What the heck is a swift, Andy? What? Quick like a swift. Fumpa, like swift, you know? But, <clears throat> you know, me, I kind of sometimes ignore the T. In fact, I get emails from the T. Why do you always leave me out, huh? What is your problem? Oh, sorry, uh, next time I'm gonna type them, I'll make them quick like a swift. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, swift kick? You never heard that, Auntie Bagel? Oh, what? You like one swift kick? Yeah. And, uh, you know, plus I'm waiting for a sponsorship from Swiffer. You know, it, it's, it's a subtle thing, but, you know, we do what we have to. Hey, there's a pandemic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we all locked down. Gotta, gotta go for what we can. No worries. Oh, you so good. Oh, somebody is talking to somebody else, and I'm gonna avert my eyes. That's all. Ooh, uh, the music sounds just right. Very relaxing. Oh, thank you, Midori. Okay, I feel good now. 
Oh, how's it, Andy? How are you, Andrew? Andrew Tunaka? Tunaka. Tanaka. <laughs> you know, seeing the Andrew in my mind went, huh? That's me or what? No, that's Andy, you. Hey, aloha, Andy. And I am a Jang Ohana from Wilson Opala. Hey, there you go. Oops, wrong day. What? What? Who, me? What I said? Oh, well, they, if I made a mistake, you know, the regulars know, hey, it must be Andy. Oh, good. We none. Of, he wasn't taken over by one alien who never does anything wrong. That's our man right there. How's it, um, Donovan? Hey, look at that. Giving me the K. So happy to see it. Joe Castro, brother Andy. Are you beef stew? Unreal banana peel? That's good, Cor Wood. <laughs> Whew, three rhymy stymies in one sentence. Mean that. Hey, Gooch, how are you? <laughs> Aloha, brother. Hey, and there's Jojo Girl. Hi, Jojo Girl. Okay, shall I sing your song? How's it, Jojo girl? Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay, I'm almost at the bottom. I gotta tell you, you buggers right here. Wendell Smith, please. Us, uh, and you and Estuco, stay safe. Yeah, I hope so. I cannot do that other part because mm, dyslexic, yeah. Dyslexia. Eh. I can get it out. I will. If you wait long enough, boom. The bugger, you know, shoot out the mouth. Hey, what's up, gang? Aloha, bro. How are you? Oh, for those of us just joining, uh, for those just joining us, you probably notice us guys speak small kind pigeon. If you have a question about pigeon words, whatever, no shame, throw them out to the Hamajan gang, and we'll do our best to uh, answer. Yeah. Let's see what we have here. Oh, look at this, a <laughs> Kuchikawa. He loved the lantern in the background. Yeah, right there. That's one of those bulbs, you know, that, that looks like a candle. You know, supposed to flicker like a flame because, <laughs> you know, you cannot put <clears throat> flames, you know, me. Okay, good night. <laughs> Forget the flame. Wake up and, you know, you be medium well. Oh, you, in a, you in my need to send you some Chicago gifts. You in a need. Oh, I think that's what, no, nah, don't send me anything, you guys. Appreciate it. In fact, uh, I think it was Taz sent me another one of, uh, he, he makes these things, you know, the Juco thingies or whatever they're called, you know, the little bobblehead thing. And he made one of me with a, with a microphone. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, bro, you should have made the hair gray. You and you was on picture when my hair was still black. Nobody gonna recognize me. <laughs> uh, no, no, it wasn't, was it Taz? No, oh, I forgot. Ah, warped memory, but was a good party. Okay, anyway, yeah, I do. Oh, poor Lani, but still distancing. Oh, cool doll, yes, Gooch. He makes them, I know, and they're called Funko Pop. Um, if I'm pr pronouncing it correctly, that's what we do. All right. Uh, oh, that, look at this. See how that, see how the Hamajang gang is right there. Funko Pop. I went nail them. Oh, wow. What did I win? Anything? Oh, yeah. I get one Funko Pop. <laughs> and it's at, by the way, um, um, I didn't go to the post office today. I'm like relegated to go maybe twice a week if I'm lucky. We're not supposed to leave our house. Plus, you know, everything spiked over the weekend again. I wish people would stay home. Hmm. Oh, Keola P, our 10-year-old YouTube star. Uncle, do you collect bobbleheads? No, I do not. Um, they're just sent to me. <laughs> I have one, that one, and I guess another one at the post office, but no, I don't. I don't know what to do with them, and you can, and you're not supposed to put them in the on the dash of the car like normally you would, but um, because they'll melt. Uh, Andy, you win the puka shell necklace. Whoa, I get one right there. Look, you see them. The the the, the third strand, the second strand in. That's a puka shell. That's right. I always like to mention that it was made by Nanny Rego, picked on the west side. Hand sewn. Oh, thanks, sir. Hey, 
the bobblehead doll look like me oh yeah let me see hold on yeah kind of like how's that wow maybe you can have a custom one made huh mm -hmm. okay uh, like i mentioned uh in the intro our guest today is loretta Oblis, uh sayer a very good friend of mine broadway star actress and uh um, and and singer, you know, ab above all, um, she you know has uh, worked at the what, what was it, the uh, Halikulani, I think, was it Halikulani? Yeah, the Halikulani, the pers that little that cool. Uh, we used, my wife and I used to call it the pistachio lounge <laughs> because they would give you choke pistachios. We go there and um, you know enjoy Loretta's music and grind pistachios. And anyway, and then uh, upcoming this week, uh, I have it someplace. Hold on. Oh, what did I do with it? Hold on. Oh, here. I can't remember, so I I, I, I made a little uh, a little graphic to it, you know, so I can read it. And let's see. Uh, today is Loretta. Tomorrow is Wyland, the artist. And then we have uh, Senator Brickwood. Uh, well, he's 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 done. Uh, do you still call him senator after they leave office? I don't know. And then we have um, Kalea and Keola P on uh, on the third, uh, right? I can't wait for that one. And then Keha Jackson on Friday from Australia, a comedian friend of mine. Amy Hill on Saturday, she's the uh, actress who plays Da Enti on Magnum P.I. And then we're going to interview Van Morris. Van. Van Morrison, <laughs> Vance Mor Morimoto, who wrote the theme song and is, uh, you know, helps me with the show. Then on the on Monday, uh, Labor Day, the seventh, uh, surfing legend uh, Jerry Lopez. And then on the eighth, Melvin Lead. And hey, Lono, if you're watching, how about does the uh, ninth work for you? Uh, September 9th, uh, we're trying to get together and um, interview Lono, who plays. We play his uh, music here. Oh, yes. Do you still call you? St yes, you still call them by their title. Oh, okay. So, uh, but his title was first smooth jazz guitarist. Shall I call him that? <laughs> ah, Amy Hill. Nice. Yeah, she's a, such a wonderful person. Uh, introduced to me by uh, Brooke Lee, and we got along famously. Hey, Andy Bumata, I always write things down. My goal is is, is to write so I can read them. <laughs> That's how. Andy's truck and Indian scooter. Yeah. I still got both sitting out there. Every once in a while, I got to shoot it with a hose just to get the dust off it. But, um, yep, still got them. 1989 GMC work truck. Hello, Andy and the gang. How's it, Steve Yosh? How are you? Huh? Okay. By the way, get if you have any questions uh, for Loretta, you know, if you're interested in, you know, I don't know, what's involved in becoming a Broadway star. She was she was nominated for a Tony Award in her in on her first performance. I mean, huh? Yeah, that's amazing. So anyway, uh, what does Cheryl Torres have to say here? How's it, Andy and the gang joining from Facebook tonight? Oh, that's good. Yeah, the Facebook side. Usually I have the Facebook pages open, but I do not because in the last couple of days when I try to hit the buttons, right? You know, when I try to switch the cameras around, there was a lag. And I think it had to do with me having too many uh, browsers on uh, open. You know, I was on two Facebook pages and over here I'm on uh, YouTube, you know, so I can spockanize, you know, what the, uh, how many are watching and how many likes we get. Which reminds me, if can, no shame, false crack, the like button, okay? Uh, Antilytics really likes that. And then, you know, when, when those are high, they, su they suggest, YouTube suggests our show to whoever's watching. You know, the, you know how the, the, all the videos come on the side? Yeah, we get plenty when, when you guys like them. So no shame, hit the like button. And if you like, subscribe. That's right, because I think if we get 12 more subscriptions, we have 24,500. Yeah, I know. So we get 2,400 
four something. What is it? Uh, Eighty eight. Ooh, showcase that public school map. You seen that? No. <clears throat> I hope it's right. Okay. Hey. Oh, what's this? Hey, you from the Bay Area? Steve's talking to Andre. Hey, brother. Oh, you, brother. You get facial. You looking younger? Really? Nah, bro. <laughs> facial. <laughs> no. And you know what? I lost weight. Um. You know when I when I had the. Um, throat cancer. Uh, I, I lost a lot of weight. In fact, my joke is I'm, I'm finally the weight I've been putting on my driver's license all these years. Yeah, I mean, I, believe me, I don't recommend the diet, but um, you know, I, when, when you cannot eat because they're radiating and doing all those things they have to do to, you know, kill the big C, it puts a detriment on grinding lao lao and show you chicken and. Mint chocolate chip ice cream with shell on top. Whoo! I'm sorry. No, I was in a fantasy world there for a while. Yeah, a nice shirt. Oh, add a touch to, and add a nice touch to your set. Oh, the shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I always mention、uh, Gooch that you know I buy these at Savers. Uh, they're all you. All my shirts are all used, except、um, some I have left over from four years ago when、um, um, Hilo Hattie sponsored me shirts. You know, ah,、oh, Gooch, keep drinking milk, brother. You know what? I cut way back on the milk, Gooch. I know you remember that when we every time we go out, I always drink milk because I don't drink alcohol, right? So when we go out. Try order milk in a bar. You know,、oh, yeah, I have a shot of tequila. Oh yeah, the, you know, Glen Livet on the rocks with a Heineken back. And you, sir,、uh, yeah, I have a glass of milk. <laughs> It's it always goes like this.、Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, milk. M- milk. Yeah, you know, from a cow. <laughs> It's becoming very popular. Do you have any? Well, well, I I think so. Let me look. <laughs> You know, a lot of people in bars they 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 put milk in scotch if they have stomach issues. So I think that's what what why they always act like that.、Oh, I know that's right, Andy. We all lie on our driver's license. Yeah, I know that would be the joke, Robert. That's why. But me, <clears throat> I went bend the truth quite a bit. Ooh, hey, how's it, Pearl Drop? Oh, great. Oh, what is that? Oh, I thought that was Funko Pop in the Avatar, but I think I was mistaken. How's it, Andy? Here's Wendell Smith checking in from the Facebook side. How's it, Andy? And the gang checking out both sides. <gasps> I thought I saw you on the other side. Hey, hey, Andy. Even after losing weight, I still lie on my weight <laughs> on the driver's license. <laughs> Ah, ah, Andy, you need an Aloha shirt with those birds in front of Savers. Yeah, if I could find one, but you know, again, right? <laughs> oh, they got milk bars for Irish coffee. Oh, oh, they have milk in bars for Irish coffee. You know, I hadn't thought about that. But if you say Irish coffee, they don't freak. But if you say just milk, yeah, I don't drink alcohol either. Yeah. You know the reason I don't mark,、um, you know, without getting too visceral here, um, um, it was because of asthma. You know, I went to this doctor. I had really bad asthma all my life. I carried the inhaler. I took pills every morning. You know, even when I was in the height of you know, of my stand-up comedy and surfing every day, I couldn't get rid of it. So this one doctor said, "You know, I treat asthma like a rash. So we're gonna find out what you're allergic to and get that rash on the inside of your lungs." And I'm like,、mm, "Okay." And they do that test where they, you know, test a bunch of stuff and. Nothing worked, and he said, "You know, we're gonna try cutting out alcohol." And back then, I was like,、uh, "No, let's try something else." Well, Andy, you know, and turns out beer and wine has something that、uh, tends to trigger asthma in certain people. Yeah. So when I quit drinking, boom, my asthma went away, and now I only get it when I really laugh a lot. You know how you that <laughs> I start wheezing. Oh. Did anyone see the vintage World War II aircraft flying over Oahu? Yeah, Jennifer. You know what that turns out? What that was? You know the Pearl Harbor attack. That was one lost bugger. Hey, hey, come on, you guys. Where you stay? Almost out of gas. 
<laughs> no, but uh, no, I did not see it. Would have been cool. Me, I lie on my height on the license. <laughs> At me, I put one fake face at. I go throw him off, huh? Oh, gee, your license here, oh, Mr. Bumata. You, you look an awful lot like Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, that's me. What? <laughs> ah, Brandy Clark, are you? I, oh, oh, sometimes when I click them, that thing don't show up. There it is. Okay, you know what? We're going to try bringing uh, Loretta now. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, here we go with the buttons again. Cross your fingers, gangy, because you never know. Okay? So let me get to the bottom. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm at the bottom now. And now, let's go. See if we can call Loretta. Hold on. Boom. Hey, what happened there? How come I get background? Oh my goodness, I don't want that. Oh, something happened. I'm not connecting. And I have, and I see, well, you don't see it, but Loretta might. Uh oh, she's not answering. Hold on. Let's try. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, okay, wait, hold on. Let's try again. Hold on. Boop. I, I don't know why I have this weird background. Connecting. Uh, we tested today and it worked fine and of course now it doesn't <laughs> oh i don't know why this happens like this but you know what it's not it doesn't sound the same hmm. wow hmm let me let me check my uh let me see here settings i'm going to Nothing there, you can. How come? Well, hang on, I may have to call her. Oh, wait, let's see here. Boom, down. Uh, can you, let's see, can you try calling me? I can't connect. Can't connect. And ECT, I can't connect. Um, I wonder what's up and why isn't it connecting on? See how it goes. Me now. Hey, hey, we live now. Yes, yes, we are, Patrick. Hey, Patrick, how are you, brother? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Hold on, let me let me try calling. Ah. ah, you guys hang out there a little bit. I mean, I'll turn the music up. Oh, that, that's good. Doo, doo, doo. Can you try calling me? Oh, hey, wait a minute, speaker. Hello. Hi, Loretta. I'm trying to con connect with you, and I don't know why I can't suddenly. Uh-oh. Okay. Let me see what's going yeah. on. Um, I see your green dot, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh -huh. and then, and, and it's weird, because when I'm connecting you, I'm not hearing that same connection thing, so it might... Sound. Yeah, so why don't you try calling me? Can you do that? Okay. I'm going to try right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do, okay, do we hang up, or...? No, I mean, because unless you're on the same phone, let, stay on the phone and then we can. By the way, your 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 voice is live on 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 the show. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. This is Loretta, who is an absolute tech idiot. Okay, let's see. Andy Boomer time. I'm going to yeah. try it right and, now. And Wendell says, oh, see, there we go. Hold on. There we go. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. Let, let's talk on the phone. <laughs> Oh, hold on, let me let me bring you on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is my good friend uh, and uh, 
Broadway star as of late. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Uh, Loretta Ablesser. There she is. Hi, Loretta. <laughs> Aloha, Andrew, my darling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm better. You know, it's funny. I always tell the, the Hamajan gang, you know, before the show starts, and you know what it's like when you do pre-show, you're always a little nervous. And then right. when you start doing it, you actually end up relaxing, you know? <laughs> Is right. That, does it work like that for you? Um, once everything gets rolling, then you forget. But it's like the five minutes right beforehand. You just yeah. kind of think, "Oh my God, what am I doing? What's my name?" <laughs> you know. But you know, go, go ahead. I was back coming, and now here we are. So. You know, I've actually uh, emceed comedy shows uh, and had comics walk up to me and say, "What's my opening line? What's my opening line?" <laughs> You know what? Honest to God, I do that all the time. Anytime I'm doing a stage production, uh, that's always the panic. My first line. Sometimes I have to write it on a piece of paper and just stand on the wings of the stage and say it. Otherwise, it's that momentary fear that eventually leaves once you get out there. But it's the first minute beforehand. <sighs> Crazy. Here's some people saying hi. Hey, aloha, Loretta. Here, hello, uh, Loretta. So happy to see you. Aloha, <laughs> Loretta. Here's Wildwood. Aloha, Reddy. We have the nicest chat on the internet. I tell you what. Here's Gil, and here's Wendell, yeah. and here's oh. Andre. Hi, Wendell. <laughs> Goes by fast, don't it? Oh. I know. I know. And I'm so old, I can hardly see anybody's. Put on your glasses. No shame. That's no, no, why. no. Oh my God, there's a world out there. <laughs> you know, uh, um, I, I had this uh, comedy friend and he said, you know, whenever I'm looking for my glasses, because everything's so blurry, I just look for two clear spots. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it true? Oh, my goodness. So, you know what? <clears throat> I've been introducing you as, um, you know, as a, a singer, an actress, and a, um, a Broadway star, you know. But I, it's funny. Uh, when I really think of you, I think of you as having, is working with the Beamer Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you remember you that? going to say housekeeper, because that's actually my full-time job right now. Oh, Housekeeper? <laughs> Housekeeper, housekeeping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Isn't it strange? You know, it's like you've done all these things in in your life too. But I think that's when we met, and some part of our brain just kind of locks in and freezes at that point. How old were we when we met, Andrew? Uh, we were. Uh, well, I, that was I, like... was, I was seven, and and you were five. <laughs> I, Wait, I don't how, old, how old were you with the Beamers? I was probably 27, something like that. Lane? You know, maybe, maybe I, I don't know, I lose track, you know, but I know I met, I met Sherry um, at the Canoe House when I was 28, so that's, I, that's, okay. that's when my world started. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I, think, I think when I started with the Beamers, when was that? Was that 79? It must have been, seven, yeah, 79 or something. Okay. Did, God. Tell, tell Which us, means go ahead. we have met each other now for 41 years. I know my you know ace is ace is 31 or 32 no 31 31 years old oh my god that's my son yeah oh my god but let, let me tell the let I me think tell the then I, I was 21 oh, where were you with the beamers oh but well look can i tell the story about how how they saw you for the first time do you remember yes yeah okay he was in your show yeah well I was doing, so folks, I was doing a show at the uh, Ocean Showroom um, in at the Outrigger, right? And that was right, right. next to that, uh, anyway, it was right, literally right on the ocean. I called it the Ocean Showroom. Hotel, the Ocean Showroom. Yeah. And um, at one o'clock in the morning, I used to do this show called The Unshow. Remember that? <laughs> And, and, yeah. and, and I would let anybody on stage regardless, right? In fact, we used to start the show, Welcome to the Unshow, the show that um, leaves people saying, oh, no wonder there's no cover. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, 
So anybody and anybody could come up. So Loretta, I, I knew her as a singer, and I said, hey, you want to come up and do a song? And you came up and do a song, and the Beamers were in the audience, saw right. you, and invited you to be part of their show. How's that? The very next day. I know, isn't that wild? Because I was actually working uh, as a hostess then. I was seating the people, taking the reservations, and seating the people, and doing sales for them. And you called me up, and that actually, that changed my whole life. And I owe you something, I'm sure. You, no, you don't get to blame me. <laughs> it was all you're doing. But, but you know what, what fascinates me is imagine you were working for them, seating, hosting. They saw you probably every day and went, she sings? <laughs> You know, the amazing thing about that whole story is that you were their opening act, but you were doing that show in Waikiki on Fridays and Saturdays at one o'clock in the morning. Yep. I mean, the that morning. is so unheard of. Oh, it, well, that's why we call that's why we called it the unshow. And I don't know if you remember, we would start, um, you know, after the no wonder there's no cover. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the show starts in 10 minutes. There's still time to go to a real show. <laughs> You had that room packed, oh, though, yeah. and I remember all all the entertainers in Waikiki would finish their 11 o'clock shows yeah. and then come and see you. I mean, isn't that mind-boggling to think yeah. in Waikiki, do they even have those kind of shows anymore, yeah. much less an 11 o'clock show, yeah. but a 1 o'clock show yeah. in the morning? <laughs> you know, I, you which know. is hard for me because at this point, it's like, um, but I'm, I'm lucky if I stay up for the 10 o'clock news. You know, I'm already <laughs> nodding off. So when I think that we stayed up that late and then we'd finish the show and I'll go have breakfast. Yeah, that Lika Lika drive-in. Yes, <laughs> oh my God, fried yeah. rice. The, you know, for the people who may not know, uh, how did how did the, uh, the Holly, it was a Holly Kulani that you were for years? Uh, I was there for 10 years. Wow, how did that yeah. happen? Um, interestingly enough, I you know, I have kind of gone between singing and acting for years. Um, it's called looking for a job. <laughs> and who's going to hire the, me? Paying the mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I had been working, I had been on tour with Honolulu uh, Theater for Youth with your brother, Ray. Yeah. And then I started singing at the Ala Moana Hotel and the Holly Kulani hired um, two other singers to work during the week, at, but they wanted a permanent substitute because these girls used to do convention shows. Remember when they used to have those in town too? <laughs> so the Holly Kulani hired me as the permanent uh, replacement when these girls needed to take a night off. And I built up my own um, following there. And uh, when it was contract time, they called me up and said, would you like to work here full time? And I did. So I worked there for 10 years from 1989 to 1999, five days a week. Wow. at the Lures Lounge. Imagine that, five days a week, you know? That, that's the longest uh, temporary gig I have ever heard of. <laughs> exactly. And, and exactly. then, folks... And from go. there to the Kahala and work there for over seven years, almost eight years, at the Kahala. But you know the, 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 the pistachio lounge that like <laughs> we used to call it? <laughs> My wife and I, right? You remember those pistachios? They were slamming. Yes. Lamin, Sla who you went there just for the pistachios yeah. and the linen napkins. <laughs> oh, they were real napkins, weren't they? Real linen napkins. It was a classy joint. Oh, it was. Why they hired me? <laughs> you but, had you the know, wardrobe. We... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was it. All my money went to buy clothes to wear five nights a week. Oh. God. It it costs a lot of money to be a chick singer. <laughs> I got it. You know, and, and then, okay, and then uh, I'll fast forward a little bit, right? Um, I, I get, I, I raise a bunch of money and decide I'm going to do a nighttime talk show five, um, uh, five days a week, right? And I, and I go to Loretta and I say, Loretta, listen, I think you'd be the perfect sidekick <laughs> for me because we get along and we love to laugh, right? And she says to me, okay, I have another gig in the works. If that doesn't pan out... Um, I'll, I'll give you a call. And I went, oh, okay, how long do you need? She goes, well, just about a week, right? <laughs> and that gig was... 
<laughs> um, starring in South Pacific on Broadway at Lincoln Center. <laughs> and she tells me this and I went, what, you're gonna blow me off for that? <laughs> what? You said to me something like, is this show gonna go on for a while? <laughs> I mean, how long is it gonna run? <laughs> South Pacific of all. Now, you know, you got to talk a little bit about that audition process. You know, I mean, Radford Girl ends up at the Lincoln Center. What happened there? Uh, I was actually doing a show um, here at Diamond Head Theater at that point uh, called You Somebody. That was about Wayne Harada, written by Keola Beamer and Lee Cataluna. And uh, got a call saying that Lincoln Center was going to be doing the first production of South Pacific that had will have been back on Broadway since the first show um, when it opened back in 1949, I think it was. Yeah. And they were trying to cast the role of Bloody Mary and they had had all these auditions in New York for six months and hadn't found the person that they wanted yet. So they looked in LA and then they looked every place in between. And um, to make a really long story short, a friend of mine that I had worked here with uh, doing a show at Diamond Head Theater knew the musical director and was having lunch with them and they were having this discussion. And my friend Randall last said, have you guys ever looked in Hawaii? Cause I used to live there and I know, you know, somebody that could do that show. And it, he, that, that musical director took the information to the next production meeting yeah, what was what is a was it about the look? It they... was kind of about everything, which was the thing that just kind of blew me away, because the family, the Rogers and Hammerstein families, were very connected to the show, and if it was going to be bought back on Broadway, they the families got final approval of everyone that was cast, and they wanted it to be authentic, and they wanted it to be somebody from the South Pacific, because this is the um, person that represents the South Pacific in the movie. And uh, our director, uh, Bartlett Shear, had wanted somebody also that had that something from the South Pacific that you can't get from um, a Hispanic actress that hasn't ever lived here yeah. or an Asian actress. You know, there's a certain gravitas pigeon. to the people. <laughs> it's a certain <laughs> pigeon. Oh, what? <laughs> and I said, who? I know who could play that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, a casting agent came here and and uh, auditioned a bunch of us and he videotaped it, but they had said they had specifically wanted to see me. And I was so nervous about this audition, plus rehearsing for a show already, I didn't have time to memorize the whole packet they sent us. And so I almost didn't go to that audition. Um, seriously, it was like, uh, you know, I was supposed to have been there like all, in about a half an hour. And I went to David's office, my husband's office here in the house and said, I'm not gonna go. And he said, why? And I said, because I'm not prepared and this is a New York, casting agent and I'm going to make a fool of myself and I don't know what I'm doing and he said you have to go you're, you're going to regret this and you know I don't I don't want you to feel six months from now to wonder to yourself if you if you could have done it or not and I said I don't know the song and I'm not prepared and he said I'll drive you just learn it on the way down there which I did and I walked in to audition and there was Marlene Sai and uh, just many wonderful local actresses here. Yeah. And I almost turned around and walked out the door and anyway, went through yeah. the audition process and I thought, well, I'll never see them again, you know, finished with it and leave. And uh, as I was walking out the door, the, uh, the casting agent said, you should hear something in six to eight weeks. Everyone that needs to see this audition is gonna take a little while before this gets to them. So, um, you know, we'll contact you at that point to let you know oh, something. And he that's actually worse contacted than Amazon. <laughs> I know. He called me two days later. Wow. And said the director had seen the tape, and uh, they want you to come to New York for your second callback audition. And I did, and landed there, and showed up on the steps at Lincoln Center. And I thought this this gig is never going to happen. Oh, okay, um, here's a real local boy question. What? Did cool. we pay your plane fare? They would pay everything like that. What? I'm talking to, to everything. My airfare, my hotel, 
meals, everything was taken care of. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Now, how, and it was it, that, if you were intimidated here in Hawaii to walk in for the audition, what was, did they audition at Lincoln Center? Yep. <sighs> out of my mind, Andrew, I was out of my mind because as performers, Lincoln Center is hallowed ground, right? Only the finest people, right, exactly. So they have the Metropolitan Opera, the New York City Ballet, I mean, everything. And to walk on the steps from Mililani, yeah. be auditioning for a show, I really didn't think I was gonna make it. I seriously didn't. And I was so stressed out and I cried my eyes out. And a really interesting thing happened. Um, you called me, in fact, David and I were laughing, you were gonna call me at five minutes to four. And five minutes to four is a theme for David and I, because my audition was at four o'clock that day. And at five minutes to four, after I'd cried my eyes out, I kind, all of a sudden, I was overwhelmed with this feeling that everything was gonna be okay, that I had angels around me, that even if I didn't get the show, it was such validation to think that I had enough talent for them to even be seen and that I would be happy, I would be thrilled if they asked me to be an understudy. I mean, can you imagine being an understudy for a Broadway show? And no. so at five minutes <laughs> to four- No, I can't imagine. <laughs> at five minutes to four, it was like angels were singing around me and my fear melted because something in my head and in my heart whatever you want to call it to be, the voice of God, the voice of angels, the voice of ancestors, something just said, you're okay. Wow. You, I think you it was, won just by being where you are. I think it was the courage of one Tira. <laughs> <laughs> Red for and girl, I, and, what? Yeah. I went in and I auditioned and it just didn't matter. It, I just threw myself into it and was so thrilled to just be able to do it. And when it was finished again, I was just relieved that it was over. And they asked me to sit outside for a few minutes. And then they asked me to come back in the room. And I had no, audition, uh, no idea who I had auditioned for. It was a group of people. And it ended up being the daughters of Rogers and Hammerstein who wrote the musical. And the entire Rogers and Hammerstein organization, director of music, president, the entire big board of Lincoln Center, wow. um, the director of musical theater, the director of uh, theater at Lincoln Center. There was about 18 people there and they called me back in the room and they said, we just want to let you know that we talked and we know you're getting on a plane and will you be our Bloody Mary? Wow. And Wow. When they told you you got the gig, did they mention that it would disappoint me? <laughs> I mean, I did say, well, I just, you know, I no. Have one small little issue here. Oh, oh. My friend Andrew yeah. would like me to be his MC in a furniture store show. <laughs> so, I gotta give him an answer. I, I, can, I, can I call you back tomorrow? <laughs> you know the funny thing, Andrew, because I knew nothing about this. I knew then that they told me I was gonna be going back to New York. I mean, they were moving me there and that I was gonna be doing the show and we'd have this long rehearsal process. I was trying to figure out where am I gonna get a place to live? Am I gonna to have to get a part-time job? Maybe I can get a part-time job waitressing or something to make money while I was um, doing the whole rehearsal process and how am I gonna do all of this? And when I got there, they said, uh, when I was there at the very end, I'm sorry. They said, no, 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 no. We're bringing you, you're our guest artist. We will fly you here. We'll move all of your things over here. We'll get you uh, an apartment um, that we pay for. You get paid the entire uh, rehearsal period and then you start the show and then you'll be doing this Broadway show. Are, are they hiring? <laughs> <laughs> I keep asking. <laughs> Hey, I, I think they're going to change their numbers. Oh my God. Hey, I, I, I got to, I want to do a small, small kind of little tangent, okay? Cool. Do you remember when we were at, um, in the Monarch Room, okay? <laughs> and do you remember little Patrick? Yes. Yes. And he used to come around and stuff like that? Yes. This is him. <gasps> Patrick. <laughs> oh. 
I remember. He was the little he was the little beach rat, and we used to we all kind of like take turns. You, you know? okay for you guys that. Uh, do they? Do you guys even know those of you that are listening to us here? I, uh, Andy, and I did the Beamer show, and then Andy got the job as the headliner at the Monarch Room at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. A comedian, a local comedian, yeah. five nights a week in the Monarch Room, and he asked me to be his opening act. And Kanoi Miller and yeah. I did this opening for you for you know the musical portion of the show. Anyway, so. This is how long Andrew and I have been friends. And there was this cute little howly boy that just kind of used to wander around the hotel. Andrew used to go surfing and hang out on, in front of the, the hotel on the beach. And he befriended this little kid that we all fell in love with, little Patrick. Right, there and he is right one... there. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> In fact, in fact, to to give people an idea of you know the three of us, we were the three musketeers, right? Uh, back right. then, we'd hang out. Um, check this is these are pictures Loretta sent me. Blew my mind. Check this out. This is us back then. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at, Look at us! Oh my God, you teased me so much about that dress. Oh, that dress, of course. And, you know, and look at my hair, jet black. Can you believe it? <laughs> but this is the point where we used to bring little Patrick in, and he was just this little kid and stuff, and he's doing real well. I went to the mainland, and Hook, uh, he and I, um, we had dinner together it, it, after one of my shows and stuff, and oh, he's oh. doing real well, has his own kid. And, oh, yeah, my God. I know, it's like a grandchild to us, you know. Oh yeah. my God. You know what I was thinking? That back then when we were doing this show, we were performing for all the, the what we referred to kindly, gently, and lovingly as the blue hairs. Yes. <laughs> because it was mostly, oh, I, exactly. mostly these ex, uh, high end tours, you yep. know, dinner tours that would come. <laughs> <laughs> this is us. <laughs> At the monarch room. Tell them what we're doing. Yeah. What, what was this? Was this the divorce song? Yes. Oh God, that was. You know that the the um the Hawaiian wedding song was just just wildly popular. So Loretta and I did the did the Hawaiian divorce song. <laughs> you wrote the lyrics. To oh it. yeah. I, oh boy, I got in huge trouble for that too. Oh, here, you? here's an um. Oh, here's another one. Check this one out. <laughs> You know this is all because of you. Yeah, I know. Well, you guys, Andrew used to come up with all of these ideas. So this divorce song, we sang, he rewrote the lyrics to the Hawaiian wedding song, and we did this Hawaiian divorce song. Of course, I dressed very elegantly, as you could tell, in the loveliest house coat and slippers <laughs> and curlers, and I dragged a handbag. And this guy, Andrew and his brother Ray, hold a record in my life. Huh? There have only been two times that I have ever laughed so hard that I peed. I literally peed myself. <laughs> <laughs> what? The first time was with you during the divorce song on, oh. on the Monarch Room stage. Oh. You made me laugh so hard. And you know, it's that Ooh! when you <laughs> feel your bladder go and you can't catch it. You oh. can't catch it. And you're in that and outfit. All because of you. Oh my goodness. And then Andrew decides one time that let's all do the show in 3D. He says, 3D. He went, he you had picked up 3D glasses for all of us. The band and, and everything. Still, the band and everyone. <laughs> and you said we're doing the show. This was a personal joke just oh. between all of us. The poor audience that was there that night oh. that saw us come out and in 3D glasses and Yeah. And you know the best part I, I remember that and, and they goes, Okay, and here's the rule. We don't make reference to them at all. Just because <laughs> because we wanted to see the audience just going, What 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 are they doing? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Monarch Room. And now it's my pleasure to introduce and you and Kanoi doing that really nice hula with the 3D glasses on. Yes. Oh my goodness. 
fun. Yes, we all did it because you were our divine leader. You led us astray, Andrew. <laughs> oh, and that's and that is the reason that um, um, you know, like the brothers Casamero were there for twelve years. Other people, they were ten years, and <laughs> we were only there for a year and a half. <laughs> Oh my oh, look, God! Look at it, Patrick says, and, and and the lighting guy had him on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh that was the epitome of esoteric show. Yeah. Nobody knew what the heck they had wandered into oh, that my. night. I know, and you know the, the the funny thing about that was, and the reason we only lasted a year and a half, because <clears throat> it was <laughs> primarily tourists. But the weekends were full of locals, and that's mm -hmm. when we had fun. Remember how much fun that was? Oh Especially my gosh! Can I tell season? you one night, just to go back to the this opening act and the blue hair audience? So one <laughs> night during the opening portion of the song, I would ha I would go out. I mean, in the opening portion of the show, I would go out in the audience and use a wireless mic and yeah. sing to people. And I was singing some song, you know, flirting with this old man, and I ran my hand through his hair. Well, the hair that he brought with him that night, <laughs> and my ring got stuck in it. So I ran my hair through his hair, and I went. Eh. <laughs> 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 and I'm so sorry, <laughs> sir. <laughs> the wireless mic in one hand, and my hand stuck in his hair with the other, and I had to do a real quick take a breath and yank my finger out of his hair and then continue to walk on because it literally and his whole hair shifted back oh my god i've never done anything like that since oh, you know um i got in trouble one time i do you remember i used to do this joke and that 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 blouse that all the tourists would wear and they'd lift their arms and it looked like an accordion all you yes. remember that that outfit and this yes. lady uh, I said, "Could you stand up, please, ma'am?" And she and, and I, she and I said, "Oh my goodness, nice blouse! You look like a kite, right?" And I said, "Kite, like you know, on a string with a kite." And right. she thought I said, "Kike." Oh no! I know. And she, oh man, all oh, hell broke loose. I got, I went, and then, and you know, real local boy, huh? Huh? What? What's a kike? I haven't. I don't even know what that means. You know. And the guy goes, "Wow, we have a." And then there's a potential lawsuit for civil this and that. And I went, "Wow, about me." <laughs> but that was a learning experience. I will. You know what? I gotta tell you. If we had that show someplace that was that was cooler and hipper, because we were all so young, right? Oh, I know. And the, the the average audience was old people. You know, like our age now. Right. <laughs> Isn't it true? I mean, I say that, and the truth is, um, I would look just like those women, women if I didn't wear, you know, I mean, use Clairol <laughs> natural hair number 7N or whatever it is that I use. I'd have the same blue hair as them. Ooh, oh, so scary. Oh. I have to show you something, Andrew. What's up? Well, in looking for those photos, I came across something else that I have. Uh-oh. Oh! oh. <laughs> And I Do signed you know? it. I signed it. Look at you made me you sign signed it. You signed it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my very own <laughs> Andy Bumatai doll. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look, it still has the tag. Oh, man. Wow. And I don't know. I, is this supposed to be light on your hair or is that a it's, yarmulke? It's, it's a I yarmulke. I was quite it's, sure. It's my, it's my homage to that kike thing. <laughs> It is, wow, you know, you know whenever I see one of these dolls, and I, this is the second one in about ten years that I've actually seen. Do, do you remember Jazz Kaner, uh, the comedian yeah, Jazz Kaner? The yeah, comedian. yeah, from Hawaii, Kailua boy. No, no, um, Kalani boy, I think. Whatever, but it, he had one. He took it home. His dog fell in love with it, right? <laughs> And and he would like sleep with it, his dog, and carry it around and stuff. And he'd like Jazz to throw it so he could pick it up. And when and if, whenever they wanted to play with him, they'd say, "Get the Andy, get the Andy." <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, for years he goes, you know, man, I was always afraid to tell you that, you know, but my dog just loved that thing. Well, I'm thinking this could make me tons of money, you know, eBay. Oh. Yeah. oh. 
Definitely. I, you know, Loretta, I mean, and I mean this sincerely, I would hold on to that because one day it will be worthless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I also, wait, 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 I'm not finished. Oh, no. I also have oh. my, <laughs> my Andy Bumatai scrapbook. Oh. oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. I not only worked with him, I was a fan. So I have autographed items. And this is the booklet with all these pictures of Andrew through his career. Oh, my goodness. Um, Show the baby Andrew picture in the beginning. Of, I think there was a baby picture of me in the front. Because I was looking. We used to do this thing where we'd do the diss and we'd show baby pictures of each other. But I couldn't find any of mine. I think oh. there's one. I think it's okay. right in the beginning. And I'm holding a sitting on a thing holding a toy or something no oh there it is yeah there it is <laughs> look at this oh, oh lower it right there oh cute the little disc <laughs> Isn't it cute? look at the little monk baby I, I showed that picture and i go oh, this is me doing shtick <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. oh my God! You know what? So um, I was looking through this, and it was just such great memories. So you know, back then I was sponsored by a lightning bolt. You know, and I was surfing. <gasps> That's why I was using that lightning bolt. Bolt, and on on the seventh, I'm interviewing Jerry Lopez, who was one of the founders of Lightning Bolt. How's wow! That? Product placement. Oh man, product placement. Yeah, it took me. <laughs> It only took me uh, from 1981 to, to get him to be a guest. <laughs> uh, wow. Look at this so, Pat Patrick says, I remember your note to me, Loretta. Oh, you wrote him a nice note one time. He mentioned uh, that to me. Uh-oh, was it nice? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I it was, you know, um, motivational almost. You know, hey, don't be uh, a kid, you know, yada, yada. You know, P people forgot. He was so Cute. I remember him and I think his grandpa um, would come and see him. And one time his grandpa came and saw him and gave him, I said something about, do you have any money for dinner? I, this, I know this sounds interesting to everybody out there. It's not like we went around picking up children just running around, but yeah. Patrick was really, really special. And he just kind of crawled right into our hearts. And anyway, I asked him if he had money for dinner or something like that and he says oh yeah my grandpa came by and gave me money and i said how much do you have and he gave him a hundred dollar bill wow. i always wanted to meet his grandpa <laughs> i wonder what his grandpa's doing his, these his, days his his, his <laughs> grand his grandpa is uncle black that's a uh, that's a hammer jang gang joke <laughs> Because <laughs> Uncle Black is, you know, he he donated this tiki, he donated this lamp, he, you know, he's a he's a um, a patron of the uh, Daily Pigeon Live Show. Yeah. Oh, so, kind. So you know, now so we did. Uh, let me. I'm just trying to get the chronology. So we did the Monarch Room, right? And then I, that's when I. After that, we did the the Canoe House. weren't you a part of that too? Uh huh. Yeah, and we performed at the Canoe House. And right. then uh, that's when um, I went broke and went to the mainland to start over, you know. Yes. It, and and I went on. What did I go on to do? I think I joined Honolulu Theater for Youth right after that. You know, um, that 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 show you did with my brother. Right. Um, uh, what, what was that song. called? Yeah. What's that? Song for the Navigator. It was Song for the Navigator. But there was another one. Um, uh, you, you somebody or was that somebody that's the one at diamond head yeah oh, okay that was the big one that's a the the that's a big room and that was the lee cataluna show and stuff and you and my brother played a a, a couple or something yeah was that the day that, were you there was that the show that where he went blind or something yeah oh, t tell yes that story. ray and i were doing this show and the 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 show was about uh, this woman that I portrayed, who was a local woman who whose greatest aspiration in life was to get her name in Wayne Harada's column. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, I think they call it typecast. <laughs> so, so she's willing to do anything and everything and make her family drop through, jump through every hoop possible to try to see if she can get a name column i mean name drop in wayne harada's column and ray andrew's brother played my husband 
and he puts up with this crazy, crazy woman. And in fact, this is the other story that I was going to tell you about. So when we, he and I were doing this show together, there was one scene where I make my family go to every talent show possible and make them sing terrible songs and terrible outfits. And at one point I have, I've run off stage and I turn around and look at them and I yell, uh, and wear your hats. You folks supposed to have little green hats. Where's your hats? Unbeknownst to me this particular night, your brother Ray had gone out to a store and bought little tiny hats <laughs> with elastic and he sprayed them all green and he gave them to all of them. And I yelled this line and I said, and where's your hats? You folks supposed to have little green hats. And they all whip out these little, tiny, little, tiny hats and put them on. <laughs> I was I was so surprised. I, w I was shocked and I laughed so hard. I peed myself <laughs> on stage. Andrew, I was wearing shiny gold pants. That's what my character was wearing. And my bladder just went <laughs> Oh my God. And you can't run off the stage because we have to sing a song. And I had to sing this song knowing I was standing there with this big wet spot <laughs> in my shiny gold pants. Oh my God. It oh. was just <clears throat> frightening. I mean, I laughed so hard the audience knew exactly what was going on because I was trying to dance and I'm keeping my little legs <laughs> together and crossing them <laughs> because I couldn't, I just couldn't. So in my life, the two times that I have peed myself from laughter oh. on stage is because of you and Ray. I, I can't wait to meet the producers of South Pacific at Lincoln <laughs> Center in New York and say, oh yeah, yeah, this is all fine, but did you ever make her pee? <laughs> Just the saying, is, just the saying. Is now that I'm 62, I pee all the time. <laughs> so, so the bar has been lowered, the bar's really been lowered. But so anyway, much. yes, that this one particular night we were doing this show. Nobody knew that Ray was ill. But what I did realize that somewhere, even during the first act of the show, when he and I had many scenes looking at each other and having these either oh. discussions or arguments, he was not looking straight at me. Um, he would be looking like just past my head. And I would say things that normally he would always try to make me break character. Yeah. And he was not seeing me and I didn't realize what was going on. You know, and then he came to my explain, dressing room. Let, let me explain to the, to the, the, the general public who may not know. Sure. My brother, um, he had brain cancer at some point and it was getting worse and worse. And the, 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 the cancer was affecting his, his eyes and and because of it now he eventually unfortunately passed on but during this period it it kicked in on the show and he went completely blind so there you go and okay. then what happened so that's we performed the rest uh, with the rest of the show at some point he came to ask me something at my in my dressing room yeah. and i realized at that point he was not seeing me at all but we had to go on and do the show and the last scene, I realized he was talking with me, but staying very close to me. What I didn't realize was he was following me by the sound of my voice and just staying close to me. He had lost his vision during the show. So, uh, and I think you came to pick him up at the end of the show yeah. and took him to the hospital. I remember that because, you know, I remember that distinctly because <clears throat> um, he said, yeah, I was just on stage and I went completely blind. And Loretta thought, I was, you know, following her voice, but it was the smell of pee. <laughs> <laughs> you were terrible. You know what? I got to say for your brother. Oh, yeah. He went to the hospital. This is the, during the duration of the show. He went to the hospital. He had surgery. Yeah. And he came back and finished the run of that show yep. after having surgery on his brain. Yeah, and and that was no small 
um, surgery either. That was like no. boom. But he, uh, well, you know why? And I tell you what, <clears throat> and we'll end here. Um, you know, this this story. I'd love. I, I could talk to you all, all day. But um, he, I think, knew that you know he had to finish certain things because you know he knew the fuse was burning. You know, and right. he said, "Hey, guess what? You know, I I got to do these things." You know, and he loved working with you. Loved it. Oh, I love working with him. I've been so lucky, really. I mean, I've been incredibly lucky about many things in my life, but working with you two. Oh, thank you so much. You know, um, uh, I, I was doing some research, and it turns out <clears throat> very few um, ladies from Radford ended up on Broadway, okay? <laughs> no, I'm sure there were two of them. You were one. Guess who the other was? Um, let's see. Is she also a singer? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. She... <laughs> yeah. Bette Midler. Bette Midler. Exactly. In fact, and I don't want to embarrass you, okay, I queued up your website here. Hold on. I'm, I think I have it here. Look, check this out. This is Loretta's website. Okay. Boom. Wait, hold on here. And then I'm going to photos. Oh, oh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta hold on. I gotta make this one smaller so that one come more big, right? Okay. And then, you guys waiting. The website is www.LorettaAblasayer, yeah. just like it sounds. <laughs> LorettaAblasayer.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and here's, and here's Bet here doing her Halloween costume of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and she nailed it. <laughs> Well, actually, here. Now, look at some of these pictures, Loretta. This is what, backstage at uh, the Lincoln Center? Center, yes. That's John Lithgow. Yeah. My Who's dear friend, Andy Bertai. Um, uh, the next one is Alice Hammerstein, who's the daughter of uh, Oscar Hammerstein. Yeah. That right there, this one, huh? Right there. Uh huh. Okay. And, and there she is. There she is in my dressing room. Wow. So, <clears throat> what? You guys went talk pigeon or what? We went talk story laddie. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. You know, it's. I, I had no idea that she was at the show. Wow. And and she came and there's Bob Saget and Danny and me. Okay. And then uh, let's see. Let's see. We go here. Right now, a wonderful jazz singer, Laura Linney. Oh, and yeah. Griffin Dunn. Laura Linney. Then yes. And let's see. Oh, and there's Michael McDonald. Michael he's he's McDonald. in Hawaii a lot. Right, Matt oh. Morrison. Oh, is this Mitzi, Mitzi Gaynor? Mitzi Gaynor. Oh my gosh, she looks great. Oh wow, that's amazing. And there's, hey look, there's Kanoi. Yeah, there's my Canuck. Oh, there you go. And, and, and Pierce Bronson, OMG. Yeah, Brosnan. Oh, I'm sorry, Brosman. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and, and Mandy uh, Patinkin? Mandy Patinkin stopped me on the street. And wanted to take the, a... The picture was taken. He had just come to see the show, and I was crossing the street to go home for lunch uh, in between shows, and he was in a taxi, and he saw me, and he stopped the taxi to run out to talk to me. It was unbelievable. And my friend Andrew Sakaguchi was with me, so I have a witness there. Oh, how hard How hard was it... Um, um, Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, I, my button went flat. How hard was it not to say, Mandy, uh, I'm on my way to lunch. This is a bad, <laughs> this is a bad time. Can, can you speed this up, please? Okay, another selfie. <laughs> no, this is, God, this is it was unbelievable. But you know what? The, my favorite star that I ever met, and I don't know if you're a huge fan, but man, in my life, this guy is number one, um, was I get a knock on my dressing room door again, that same knock from the stage manager, and she says, James Taylor would like to meet you. And I have been, I have been a James Taylor fan since, you know, Fire and Rain back in 1971. And, um, and so I don't have a picture on my website, I should put it, the thing yeah. is in this picture, I am sobbing uncontrollably because James sure. Taylor is the soundtrack of my life, you know, those formative years when you're falling in love with music and and he was it. So to stand there and meet him and talk to him wow. and 
uh, that was it. That was the pinnacle for me. Oh, sure. And and how hard was it um, not to say, so, bro, what happened to your hair? <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, nothing. Nothing. But you know what? The, <laughs> the voice is still there. Still. Still there to still. this day. Wow. God, I love Look at him. this here. Look, people freaking out. And, and, and Miles teaches music. Wow, James Taylor. No way. Look at this. No way. James Taylor. <laughs> James and, Taylor. I have proof. I'll put I'll post the picture of James Taylor and I on my Facebook page tonight. Oh, look at this here. Maybe you know um uh Keholani. Look, I went to Radford with Bette Midler. Of course, she <gasps> wasn't the Bette Midler at the time. I think she was from Red Hill. She was. She was. She was from like, a, what did she say? It was a Makalapa or something like that. Yeah, she had then. plenty Samoan neighborhood. When I, when I met her, she <laughs> was talking about, oh, I had plenty Samoan neighbors. So when, when, when she came to see Booga Booga that time, that story I told you. Anytime, yes, you should tell them about that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but, but, the but, clean version. Uh huh? <laughs> the clean version. Oh, the clean version. Okay. <laughs> Well, here, I'll, I'll give you the short version, guys. Uh, Booga Booga and I were, um, we were in, um, uh, at the old Dukes, uh, we followed the Follies, which was basically a TNA kind of, you know, middle of the road show for, you know, for tourists, right? And the deal was that uh, all the money we made after the show, we could keep, but it was all tourists. And this was Booga Booga, James Grant Benton, um, um, you know, Ed Kahia and myself. Now, the tourists went, what? And one by one, they would just leave. It was like an hourglass. As the, you could tell what time it is by how many people there were there till finally there was nobody. But one night, there was this laughing in the audience through the whole show. And especially when we did Samoan act, oh, you fella cannot go like that. Now we're gonna go give you the sasa. You know, and oh, all of a sudden, <laughs> bam, this, right? So. Pretty soon there was only this one woman and her husband left and she was rolling, hitting her knee and stuff. So after the show, I walked up to thank her and it was Bette Midler. And she just said, this, that was the funny, she goes, it was like performance art. Every, every time you told a joke, 10 people would leave. <laughs> my entire career has been performance art <laughs> exactly oh my goodness i gotta tell you, you know my goal is to be like her she when she went to new york she was in um she was in uh gosh what is the musical um oh i can't think of it now my brain is my brain is gone uh, if I were a rich man, what is the name of that musical? Why is um, my brain gone? Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, so that's... she was the chorus of that. And um, and then she didn't do Broadway again until she went back a couple of years ago and she did Hello, Dolly, and she won a Tony. Yeah. So well, I think, you know, you know I'll do the same thing. I'll go back, you know, in another 10 or 15 years and yeah. then do another show. And then, and, and this time you'll take the Tony because I know in your first... <laughs> performance you were nominated I'll that beat the girl that won i'll beat her and take her tony. i'll get the tony no but you were nominated in your first at your on your first broadway show that's phenomenal yeah that was wild yeah that was kind of fluky wild yeah I mean, what was the that? greatest that... honor ever though i mean what was it like to be in the audience oh fiddler on the roof keone nunez says the roof. thank you yeah that was thank Ke you. keone nunez said that Thank you, Keone. You're perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for being kind to Auntie who no can't think so hard anymore. A little bit tired, a little bit old. Thank well, you. And plus, you know, us would be, you know, cat on the uh, the hot uh, uh, Quonset <laughs> hot. <laughs> we, get, we get one show it like no. Cat. Yeah, we get the ukulele player on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, it was it was really it was that whole thing was very surreal. Oh, you know, it, 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 because I came from Hawaii into New York and into Broadway and there was nothing nothing in my career that had or could possibly prepare me for that. 
and what you fall into in that place and the demands and the schedule and the things that happen, I was just, you never get your feet firmly on the ground because you're tossed somewhere else every single day. And then that nomination happened and I wasn't expecting that at all. And then all of a sudden you've got to go and get a gown and yeah, all of that and you show up and your name is there and you're sitting across from Harry Connick Jr. and Liza Minnelli and you know it's you just keep thinking whose life am I living right now it was absolutely surreal and then before you know it Kristen Chenoweth said my name and she actually pronounced it correctly that was the thrilling part for me I don't know where she got that information from but she actually said my name correctly and then everything just kind of the stress finally leaves your body because yeah. then again, it doesn't matter. It's pow, because just that happens. You don't have to win. You know, you hear people say in shows, it doesn't matter if you win or not. It's just yeah. a thrill to be nominated. It's the truth. It is, well, it's, it's especially in your case, because it was your first Broadway show, you know, right. I mean, and so that's the case. You know, I heard about that part where she, um, she pronounced your name correctly. But I understand she left out, you know, Radford grad. <laughs> exactly. You know, I was waiting. I, I, I know. And, and it was so cool for you. It not worked to... now that rhymes with witch. <laughs> yeah. But hey, what about the Radford bod girl? <laughs> Gone fun it. You know what, class of 76, my folks stay waiting. <laughs> you know, Great. um. Uh, we're way over time, you know. Oh, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 I, I love it. And, you know, uh, how often do we get to chat like this, you know? And it's funny how, oh, you like talk. Okay, but let's do it in front of people, <laughs> right? <laughs> what um, um, advice do you have for local girls, you know, or even boys who are thinking about breaking that surface tension that you did? Because plenty... Uh, you know, like when you were going, when you were doubting yourself and saying, I'm not even going to go to the audition and all that kind of stuff. What advice do you have for them? Oh, um, the biggest lesson that I learned from all of this is that you, the greatest gift that you have, the thing that's going to make you stand out from everybody else is you. Don't try to be the next Edina Menzel. Don't try to be the next Kristen Chenoweth. Don't try to be the next somebody that's already there because they're already there. What they don't have is you. And that is something that I learned in this audition process and in getting the show. Um, because being me in this world, I, I'm 5'2 and have more curves than apparently people are supposed to have. And you get bombarded with those kind of things, how imperfect you are all the time in society, in, in fashion, in everything. They tell you how you're not perfect. And so when I went to audition for this show, I felt incredibly imperfect and thought that I didn't have anything. I was not a Juilliard uh, trained actress. I was not a trained Broadway or operatic singer. I didn't have any of that. I was 49, very soon turning 50 years old. I was Filipino Spanish, raised in Hawaii. All I had was me. And when I got there and they hired me, the director had said, where have you been? We were looking for you. And it was at this point in time that they didn't need a five, eight leggy blonde, God bless five, eight leggy blondes, but a five, eight leggy blonde can't play Bloody Mary. Wow. They needed somebody who was scrappy and who had lived a little bit of life. Uh, there's nothing about her that was elegant. They needed somebody that came from the Aina that could bring that with her. And that's what I could offer. And that's what they wanted. So the greatest gift about that was I brought me. Wow. And it was me that they hired to play that role. 
they trusted me and were looking for somebody like me and I wouldn't have gotten it had I been anything else but me. So the lesson in all of that is bring you, whatever you are, whatever you are in your person, in your experience, in your heritage, in your looks and your height and your weight and the way that you carry yourself. It doesn't matter if you're straight or gay or anywhere in the spectrum at all. You bring who you are and the life and the passion and the love and the honesty of who you are. That's what the world needs is you. Wow. And here James says, and no pee on stage. And no pee on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, be you, but where it depends. <laughs> but where That's it what depends. I have to say. You know, so many people are saying, look at this. We need Loretta and Andy part two, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Okay, next time you can come to my house and I'll cook dinner. <laughs> we'll what? go and we'll just we'll go live <laughs> during that. Oh, that's it. It's what makes you you. You look at this. Agree with Empty Bagel Part Two, please. Oh man, look at this. In in uh, imperfect, perfect, never change. Oh. Wow, and here's Steve Daniels saying, "Whoo, shaka." Yeah, this that's it. Well, I got to tell you. Uh, oh, oh, look at this. I just wanted to Loretta. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Is. Oh it's my a, gosh, Chris! Chris is in Australia. Oh, who is he? Oh, you know Chris. I know Chris. Oh, yeah. There he is. Wow. Look at that. I, well, then I hate to break this to you, but look at the avatar. He found a new girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, but she's not me. Eh? Yeah, no, I get she's hair not. Than her. <laughs> and my lips more for than her. So eh. Yeah. But she, look at the hair, though. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And here's one here. Um, Loretta, what a pleasure to have you here. Mahalo, dear Tira. Oh, that's Thank it. you so much. Oh, it's it. been so great being here, Andrew. Oh, this is the Hamajang gang. Yes, I want part two. Part two, give them. Oh, look at this. <laughs> good, good stuff, Loretta and Andy. Hamajang to the max. Yeah. Hamajang. That's my favorite <laughs> pigeon word. That's who we are. We call ourselves the Hamajang gang. I love that. Everyone who, who posts here, and like I told you earlier, we have people from all walks of life, all political views, all colors, all religions, all sexual orientations, whatever, just like right. you were talking about. But when we come here, we are the Hamajang gang and we concentrate on what we have in common. You know. Yes, that's and, it. and that's right. Just like what Patrick had said, the reason that we all all come together is because we are all imperfectly perfect. There's something yeah. we all bring, whatever the di our differences are, and that what that's what makes us a whole. Yeah, that's it right there. Thank you so much, Loretta. Oh, I love goodness. you. I love you with every cell in my oh, body. Brother. I love you, you, Loretta. I love you too. You know, it's fun to isn't it fun to rewind with somebody. It you know, is. Oh, it, my it, God, to have all these past experiences. I mean, you knew me back when I was a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't there at your birth. <laughs> oh, Wild this. Willy Tank Tank. Yeah, she says, you know, play the Hammer Jang song. You know what? We're going to, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I don't know if you heard the Helma Jang song. You know what? That's perfect. Let's do that. In fact, Loretta, if you can hang up, the show ends in 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 three minutes. We've been talking for over an hour. <gasps> I'm so sorry. No, that was okay. so much fun. But I'm going to I'm going to play uh, the Helma. This is th this song is by Lono. Um, he's a wine eye boy. I'm trying to get him on as as an interview. But uh, you got to listen this song here. Uh, we've adopted uh, and it uses an old style pigeon phrase because we're the Hamajang gang, right? Well, he right. talks about people being Hamajang Jang. And I don't know if you're old enough to remember when people used to say they were drunk. Oh, that bugger. Oh, Hamajang Jang. <laughs> right. That, that was that was the, uh, you know, uh, slang for, uh, you know, Inu Nui, right? Drink right, plenty right. right so I want I want to play it here and you listen okay. to it and then after that we'll say good night okay hold on I'm going dance while you're playing yeah okay here we go let me let me just make sure that I got everything going here hold on and there Oh, 
kou i a pahi nui Ke ho o kane ho kau kika E aloha ana nele nahe nahe E o lelo haoli Everybody dance, everybody sing Everybody and a am a jang jang <laughs> Aoi a o kou i a ata aize Ke ho o kane ho kau kika E aloha ana nele nahe nahe E o lelo haoli Everybody dance, everybody sing, everybody in the Pema Jang Jang. Remember this one? Oh, he a o ko i a jogang, ke ho o kane ho bass line. E aloha na mele na hai na hai, e o le lo haoli. Everybody dance, everybody sing, everybody in the Pema Jang Jang. Moke ale, ke ho o kane ho ukulele Te aloha ana mele nahe nahe E o lelo haole Everybody dance, everybody sing Everybody and a pamo jang jang Ao heo o ko i a sanichi lingwe Ke ho o kane ho kau kika E aloha ana mele nahe nahe E o lelo haole Everybody dance, everybody sing, everybody in the Pema Jang Jang. Oh, hey, oh, oh, ko ia, kamaka vivo ole, ke ho o kane ho ukulele. E aloha na mele nahe nahe, e o lelo haole. Everybody dance, everybody sing, everybody end up. Everybody dance, everybody sing, everybody end up. Everybody dance, everybody sing, everybody end up in my jang jang. Oh, say, oh, say there. Ah, there you go. Oh, thank you so much, Loretta. I got to tell you. Thank you, darling. Well, you know, we, we now have a, a, a personal best on interview length. And um, <laughs> it just, it, it ripped by for me. I hope it did for you. Yeah, it did. Oh, look at this. And look at the, these are super chats I was telling you about. Look at this here. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. Look at this. Hey, mahalo. Hold on. We'll do, we'll do, there's, there was a few more, and I didn't want to interrupt the song. Or here, here's another one. For, we call this the mana amount, right? <laughs> right there. So I always go, hey, mahalo. Right? And then uh, there were, then here's uh, Michi Mama 60. Ooh, finala. Oh, I love today's show. Today's interview almost peed my pants. Well, one day... <laughs> No, like like Loretta said, don't be Loretta. Be yourself. <laughs> be your own pants. <laughs> Wear a deep pants. <laughs> there you go. Especially if you're around Andrew. <laughs> there you go. Okay, gang, you know what? I'm going to say good night, and I'm going to leave Loretta up on the screen because she's been a big part of this show. And I want to thank you for joining us. And remember now, you can watch this whole thing over on both um, Facebook and on YouTube uh, when we when we uh, you know post them after the fact right there. Okay, thanks. Eh? So, aloha no. Good night, Loretta. Good night. Love you. <laughs>